it's Em and welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, welcome. My name's Em. I'm a former zookeeper and I'm an animal educator. Today I'm going to be reacting to different animal grooming videos. Oh, there are some interesting grooming videos out there. Some of them I see and I think that they are adorable and others I just think, what are you doing? There are actually animal trends when it comes to grooming and a lot of very well-meaning owners want to participate not realizing that sometimes there is a lot of danger. So I'm going to be giving you a rundown of what I see in each of these grooming videos, how I might do things differently, why certain things are okay and why some things are not okay. And of course hoping that you will join in with the conversation by leaving comments down in the comment box below. But before we jump into today's doggy do's and do not disasters, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Function of Beauty. I never had an individual tailored skincare product. This has been a completely different and eye-opening experience. The wonderful thing about Function of Beauty is that it is customized to your individual skin. Before receiving my tailored Function of Beauty products, I had to take an online quiz. It asks you about your skin type, whether you have balanced skin, oily skin, combination skin, which is actually what I have. They're going to give you options as to whether you want to have fragranced or fragrance free and something that I really liked is that you have the opportunity to even put your name or perhaps a friend if you're doing a gift on the bottles. So my bottles actually say function of M on them. For me my skin goals which I also was asked during the quiz are hydration number one because I live in Colorado and it is so dry and my other skin goal is anti-aging. If you are looking for a custom simplified skincare routine which requires only three clean simple products I would highly recommend function of beauty. After months of struggling to hydrate my skin function of beauty has really helped me to achieve my skincare goals. And if you live in a changeable climate, Function of Beauty has you covered because you can easily adapt and tweak your routine as the seasons change. The whole process from the quiz to receiving my products was so simple and my high expectations have been more than surpassed. 15 out of 10 experience. It's difficult to pick a favorite. I would say the moisturizer is definitely one of the very best moisturizers I've ever tried, but the serum feels really good and it's really, really fast absorbing as well. So I think the serum might actually just be my favorite by a smidge. Function of Beauty are sustainability focused, vegan and cruelty free. Boop. So if you would like to discover Function of Beauty for yourself, go down into my description box below where you can receive 20% off of your purchase as well as a free headband. Thank you once again to Function of Beauty for sponsoring today's video. To find out more, head down into the link in my description box below. Thank you for listening to today's sponsorship. Sponsors are really important for keeping my channel up and running. So thank you very much Function of Beauty. Let's get on with the main video. This first video features a very popular breed of dog on social media, the beautiful eye-catching Samoyed. Stop. Oh. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. All I'm saying is I kind of wish that I was able to shape my own peach like that. That's insane. I have never seen such a curvature on a doggy's badonkadonk. Um, okay. I don't hate it. Um, I don't see anything wrong with this. The only thing that I'm a little bit concerned for, uh, is, is, is the owner. Is the owner okay? Why would you want to have that, like, such stuff? find butt shape. I live with two Samoids and they don't naturally have a derriere that looks like this Samoid over here. This is impressive grooming, I will say. I have no idea how they managed to get that really fluffy cloud kind of cotton candy texture. The tail is so bouncy. Samoid tails are not normally this kind of rounded shape and you can really see how it just jiggles, which um, is, is very uh, impressive. On the one hand, I can see it's really cute. Unlike Dobby. Say hello, Dobby. I wonder if I could achieve the same look with Dobby. Would that be possible? Should I try? Should I shave a line down the middle there so it looks like you have a perfect peach? 
This is Dobby, and if she ever pushes my buttons too far, um, I will shave her and make her look like a naked mole rat. Okay, next video I'm going to be reacting to... You'll see. You'll see. Oh, what a cutie, though. Oh, no! Oh, no! Wait, wait! Oh, oh, that tail! Look, look at that tail! That, like, little bit on the end there just makes it so much worse. It's like a bobble of shame. He looks so happy and majestic, and then they just... Did that to him. Oh no, oh no, no, no. At what point did the owner start shaving and clipping and just think, you know what, this is going great, I'm just gonna keep going. Did they did they start and, and, and think that they could just even it up as they went along and then they ended up with that? His little front legs look like chopsticks. How are you so tiny under there? That face at the very end there is so unimpressed. He's like, mother, why? I mean, you can't appreciate good hair and fur until you've had a bad cut. Uh, for me, my cut, my bad cut, came when I was about 10, and this, this here is, is my, my bad cut. Let's just all enjoy this. But that, uh, is gonna regrow. I'm, I'm not too worried. The dog is obviously in fine health. Um, these, this particular breed, he looks like some kind of terrier, terrier cross, maybe a poodle terrier cross, I would think. Um, I don't think that it's gonna cause any long-term damage to this dog's fur. Um, he's just gonna be mighty uncomfortable, perhaps a little bit cold, um, perhaps exposed to, uh, the sun's UV, um, and... Dobby. Dobby, everyone. <laughs> this box is now theirs. This this whole video is now theirs. And I don't think that this coat is going to have any long-term damage. Um, perhaps what I would be more worried about is exposure to the sun for the skin, um, because that skin's not used to seeing so much UV, so if they live in a hot and sunny climate, then this person might want to think about putting some kind of a t-shirt or something on their dog to, pr to protect them from the sun. But overall, um, it's just a very, very unfortunate haircut. This next clip is interesting. It features dog hair dye, which is all over TikTok right now. So uh, let's dive on in and pick this one apart. I'm redying my dog purple, and I want to take you guys through the step-by-step -step process. It's actually a great bonding experience for you and your pup. I'm going to be using the Ocaz dog hair dye in Mystic Purple. Apply the dye to each puppy part you want colored. Rubber gloves are essential unless you want to be dyed too. <laughs> now the fun part. Entertain your pup while you leave the product on for 20 minutes. Once time is up, rinse the pup. I like to finish spa day with South Park's Blueberry Facial. I apply the shampoo everywhere, and everybody loves a good facial. This is for sure Lava's favorite part. It smells so good, and who doesn't love a pup that smells like blueberries? Rinse your pup thoroughly with warm water and prepare yourself, because here comes the shake. Aw, bonding time. Once your pup is squeaky clean, begin the drying process. This usually doesn't last long for Lala because she likes to air dry, and she does that by playing. And I actually don't mind this part, but after a couple minutes of playing, it's time to put on her leash, leave the spa day, and head home to show off her new do. We clearly have lots of fun being purple. Ta-da! Rock on! <laughs> So this clip um, does give me a few things that I want to talk about. First of all, I don't know who this creator is, but she does clearly love her dog. Um, dog hair dyes are not something that I would ever... Dog hair dyes are not something that I would ever personally want to use on my pets. Although, to be completely honest with you, I don't think any hair dye would show up on my dog because he is just a dark, shadowy void. Well, hello, my little babushka. So maybe I'm just slightly salty because I could never dye my dog, but to be honest, I, I wouldn't. Um, a lot of these hair dyes are formulated specially for canines, so they are permanent colours. You also get semi-permanent colours. I don't think wash-in, wash-outs really work that well, although there are like chalks or pastel colours that you can use for dogs as well. Um, but these are specially formulated for dogs. Um, they've been tested naturally 
on dogs to make sure that for the vast majority of dogs they're not going to present a problem and the formula shouldn't cause any kind of irritation. However, however, just as with humans having adverse reactions to hair dyes which are absolutely fine for the vast majority of people, certain dogs can have sensitivities as well. So if you are planning on dyeing your dog's hair or fur, the first thing you have to do is patch test. You want to make sure that you find a patch of skin somewhere where you can apply a little bit of the dog hair dye. This way you can monitor the area for the next 24 to 48 hours and make sure that your dog is not um, is not showing any signs of distress, any kind of irritation, any inflammation and if they are naturally you want to go straight to the vet and you would want to retain the package of the product that you were using so that the veterinarians can run some tests and identify exactly what part, what chemical caused the reaction for your dog. Another important thing to do is to make sure if you are going to dye your dog, be very mindful of where you source your products from. There are plenty of copycat products available online via places like Amazon where you think you might be getting one particular kind of product and it looks the same, it has the same packaging, but it might be counterfeit and therefore full of chemicals which are not actually specified on the bottle. So it's very, very important that you do your due diligence. If something feels off about a product, if it doesn't smell right, if it doesn't seem to to have the right consistency that you might be used to if you've used the product before, better safe than sorry, just don't use it. There was actually a case a while back of, I think it was either a Pomeranian or a Chihuahua, I think it was a Pomeranian um, whose owner dyed the ears red and the ears actually um, they actually rotted off. They got infected and they rotted off. So again, you have to be very, very careful of what you are putting on your dog's uh, body. And it also goes without saying that you should never use any kind of human dye products on an animal. They're formulated for us. You'll also want to be mindful over the breed of dog that you have and the coat type. And the reason why is certain dog breeds, they grow their coats very quickly. That's why you see a lot of poodles used uh, in different kinds of grooming competitions. They grow their fur very quickly and it's not a problem if you shave them. However, if you are going to dye a double coated breed of dog, the dye is going to sit in there forever and you are not supposed to shave a double coated breed of dog. So it's very important that if you do have a double coated breed, for example, a Samoyed, a Husky, uh, a Eurasia, like what I have, if you're going to dye their fur, it is long term. You can't just decide one day you don't want it there anymore. You'll have to wait for them to blow the coat and for the color to naturally fade away. Speaking of double coated breeds, the next video features a shaved Husky and I have a lot to say about this topic. Ooh. Yeah. First of all, that is a lot of fur to have shaved off. The entire middle section of this dog is gone. I feel that this section of the video is really important because a lot of people have the misconception that in the summer you are supposed to shave your huskies to keep them cool or that you're supposed to shave any double-coated breed of dog to keep them cool. In fact, I have been walking my own double-coated breed of dog, Kiba, who is a Eurasia, and I've had people say to me in the summer, why aren't you shaving his coat? He is far too hot. We all have that quintessential image of huskies pulling sleds through the snow um, and racing, so we all have that quintessential image of huskies living in very cold climates, pulling sleds and needing to keep themselves warm. And that's normally what we think of when we think of a double coat. We think of it as a way to keep the dog warm. And on the one hand, this is correct. In the winter, that double coat really helps to insulate the dog. So cold air gets trapped between the top coat as well as the undercoat. It warms the dog. It keeps them really nice and toasty. However, However, in the summer, the opposite function is needed and actually works with a healthy coat. What happens is that the... Oh. Can you guys chill? What happens in the summer is that a healthy double-coated breed of dog blows its undercoat. So they lose all that dense woolly undercoat. It just comes out. You will have seen tons of videos, I'll see if I can insert one later, of dogs blowing their undercoat. This keeps the dog nice and cool. However, what the top coat does is it protects the dog from the sun's rays. It actually deflects the sun and it keeps the dog a lot cooler. 
if you are to go ahead and shave a double coated breed of dog, the dog cannot thermoregulate itself. The skin underneath a double coat is not meant to be exposed to the elements, whether it is extreme cold or extreme heat. And if you shave down that coat, you expose a double coated breed of dog to sunburn and sores, which can also cause uh, lesions, which makes the regrowth of any hair very patchy, potentially for the long term. And it also ruins the coat the next time it grows in. So with an undercoat, that grows in once or twice a year on a healthy double coated breed of dog. However, those guard hairs, the outer coarse layer, which also has a function and works in conjunction with the undercoat, that doesn't grow back every season. That can take up to two years, sometimes more, to properly regrow. So every time you shave down a husky or an Alaskan Malamute or a Samoyed, the coat is never really going to go back to the way it was. And when it does grow back, it can come back much more dense, a lot more woolly and be a massive matted mess. The only time you should really be looking to shave down your double coated breed of dog is if your veterinarian has told you to do it because of a skin issue. And that is actually after some research what is happening in this video here. The owners were told by the veterinarian to shave down the coat. I would still be a little bit wary of doing it. I would want to get a second and a third opinion from other veterinarians before shaving down a double coated breed of dog. If it has to be done, it has to be done. My roomie Kate has a great routine for um, brushing her dogs. She taught me how to properly look after Kiba's coat because I thought that I was brushing it correctly, but she showed me that there were mats in places that I wasn't aware of. And luckily she was able to show me with the right tools how to brush out properly and to maintain the coat. I really love this next video. It features my roommate Kate and her two double coated Samoyeds, Tinkerbell and Miko. I feel such a sense of pride watching this video because I live in the same space as Kate. I see how much time and dedication she puts into grooming both of her dogs. They're absolutely just so spoiled but also so well cared for. Um, Kate has been keeping Samoyeds now her entire life and she's got a great way of making the experience um, a very relaxing one for her dogs which I think is partially why um, she's got so much success with grooming her dogs. I mean she is not um, she's not holding her dogs down it's not sedated um, they're just used to being touched and they kind of look forward to it because it's a nice bonding experience but this is every week um, yes granted this is a coat blow so it's not normally this much every time but you still do when you're grooming a healthy Samoyed get a couple of big handfuls of fur so I will link Kate's video about grooming down in my description box so you can go and check it out for yourself if you want to and that's it for today guys I hope you enjoyed reacting to these videos with me how do you feel about dog dyes do you dog do you dog? Do you even dog? How did you feel about today's videos? Do you dye your dogs? Uh, do you, are you a groomer? Let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in another video soon. Bye.